Hello, fellow Dolly enthusiast. So I decided to give a photo session to one of my boys, you know, having a study break and everything. And, uh, I can't seem to find my books, my little prop books for him. It got me thinking, those books were kind of just thrown together, and I really would like to try and make them the right way, because they don't open. I don't know where they're at, I can't show you. And it's a process. I, I've done the research, so, um, maybe you want to come along for the ride. All that being said, let's get to it and see what we can make. To start with the rule and some double sided tape, I'm going to set up a simple jig to cut leaves of paper out that about the same size. If all goes good, this should make this part of the bookmaking process faster. Unless you have a paper guillotine available to you. The important part is making sure all the lines are straight for the cut. A little cardboard that we used as stoppers we're about to set up. But let's edge them off so the jig will give us a straight cut. Just need to secure them down and it looks pretty good. I'm using 10 sheets here so we'll be cutting 30 times and this jig layout will cut the height of the sheets needed. And with the magic of editing, it's finished. Because this is a repetitive process that will drag out the runtime we have together. Readjusting the jig again, the stopper layout now will cut the width of each leaf. Using the original example piece and doing the same process, taping down and lining stoppers to cut the sheets again, giving us 60 pieces. But not before getting rid of the section light. And with that done, cleaning off the jig and folding the sheets. It's easy enough. Line up the edges and creasing the fold so everything sits snug. And here's where I realized that I'm missing the pretty paper to go over the end pages. And the end pages. So to take care of that, we'll just use one of the sheets as a guide. These will be one long strip that will be adjusted later to finish the book. I'll be using cardstock for the end pages. Once I will be glued to the book board, so I figured something stronger than regular paper would be best to take the work of keeping everything together longer. After folding and cutting from the middle, I snip off a quarter inch from the side and a dart from the top and bottom, giving us these. With all the leaves cut out, just need to tap them a bit and straighten them out. Just adding the end pages because, again, they were forgotten. After tapping way too much, the bundle gets put into a clamp. I'm tapping with the folded side down since that's where the work will happen. Even after that, there's more tapping to make sure everything lines up and finally it gets tightened. The pages are going to be sewn together and instead of poking holes one by one, we'll just make six marks and saw them all at once. The spacing doesn't have to be specific, so we'll just eyeball it. The cuts don't need to be deep, but I'll do my best to keep the saw even and straight across. And we have decent holes to sew with. Starting first with the end pages, sew back and forth through the holes all the way to the end and come back to the beginning and make a knot with the tail. As its nature is, the thread will twist and try to knot itself, so gotta go slow and untangle as we get along. On to the next step. Again, I forgot something. The pages were supposed to be put into packs of five, and after a few stitches, here's the moment I realized my mistake. Had I continued, that would have been a crazy amount of work getting this together. Okay, we're back on track, and starting we go in the first hole and out the second. But importantly, we hook the needle under and in front of the previous stitch and come up behind it. Then reinsert that through the hole we came out of. As this example shows, because this is crazy to explain. Out, in front, and under. Then behind, and back in. The understitching locks the packs together and gives it a strong spine. 
continuing on like this for the remainder of the book until we get to the other end page and making a few nods to secure the thread. And huzzah, we have a flippable book. Flippable, flip, flippa, flippable, flippable book. Now to reinforce the spine, I'll measure a strip of fabric that will come a little down the sides but not overlap over the top of the pages. And trust me, I'm reading this the way I wrote it and I'm still a little confused, but just, just, follow, just follow along, just follow along. And to make sure everything sits well, it goes back into the clamp. Just a bit of glue along the back and side should do it with a little on top. After drying, I get to looking at the edges of our book. Looking a little rough there. Real book finders have a tool for this step, but that's an investment I'm not willing to make. So let's use logic. This is paper. Paper is made from wood. Wood can be sanded. There we go. We should be able to sandpaper this. Let's give it a shot. Using sandpaper with a 180 grit and to make it easier to handle, putting the pages back into the clamp again, we start smoothing the front and sides until it looks a bit nicer. Yep, much more satisfying to the touch. Real quick before moving on, about the book boards. I'm going to be using cardboard, but I do have opinions on what holds up better. Something like a soda box or the like is a bit flimsy and tends to warp after getting glued and dried. If you ever crafted with it before, you know what I'm talking about. There's no corrugate inside for support, but the cardboard here has a bit of corrugate and isn't as thick as regular cardboard boxes, so the scale looks right for this size. And not to mention, this is taken from a cookie box, so I'll get a treat later after this. Using the pages as a guide, we cut out the spine, front, and back boards. We could stop there, and this would work for making a book, but let's go a little bit extra and add a clasp on the side. For that, a few extra pieces, one to cover the side and a front flap. For it to stay closed, I'm adding magnets that will sit inside the boards. To do that, I'll just be hole punching two spots, and to keep everything lined up, I'll use the first piece as a guide on punching the holes for the second piece. Yes. And with that, we can move on to the covering. This being faux leather and very pliable, it shouldn't get too rigid when the glue dries. I'm just cutting enough to wrap over the edges here, but later I'll cut it again for a better fit after the boards are glued down and dried. Have to make sure everything is lined up and checking with the pages to see if everything fits. And it looks about right. Importantly, we have to make sure there's enough space to let the boards swing freely. While we're at it, gluing in the magnets with all of them facing the same direction because, of course, if not, they'll push the book open. And pressing it down until it dries, and next we cut it to fit. For the corners of the fabric, we cut off the edges at about a 45 degree angle, but not too close to the board. There needs to be a little bit of fabric to round over the edge better. And with these cuts, it should let the edges come together cleanly. Some areas are harder to cut the extra fabric out from like these smaller angled corners but we have to get rid of the bulk that would be in the way of the book closing. Giving it a pinch and hoping for the best works okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. With all the corners made and extra fabric cut out, we glue over the edges. Unfortunately, the carver has a bit of gloss to it, so it's a bit slow to adhere the fabric, 
but with a bit of patience and pressure, it'll lay down. All glued and to put it to dry under a bit of weight to help everything stay flat. Next up is gluing in the pages, but we need to protect them from getting stuck together by wrapping them in an envelope of wax paper, which has come in useful throughout this whole process. Just coating the back of the bookends and spine. While using some force to push the pages in, making sure there's good contact, I'm also feeling the placement of the edges and manipulating it to sit from the edges as evenly as possible. And to put it into a clamp to dry. After drying and leaving on the envelope, the fancy paper gets cut to size and glued down. If we try to massage it flat barehanded, it might start to rub and peel up. So instead, this piece of fleece should smooth it out safely. Starting from the edge, I smooth this piece back, making sure the paper is pressed into the joint with a pen, giving a little extra room to fold better and then smooth it a bit. And here it is, pretty much finished and looks great. It looks like one side was pressed a bit lopsided and has a bigger gap. But it opens and closes smoothly, the pages aren't glued together, and looks pretty cool. But to add a bit of accent, let's put edge protectors. Hmm, too big. These little ones will work. Then there's a cut in the corner so we can open it a bit to fit the angle of the front clasp. Yeah, this is a good idea. The inside corners don't really need them, but we'll add them anyways. Using a screwdriver to widen the mouth so it doesn't dig into the fabric and tapping it down to make sure it has a good bite. Next, the delicate and time consuming task of... Well, never mind. Use a frustration to secure it. And here it is. All finished and the prop looks great as long as you're not expecting to read Shakespeare when you open it. This was such an enjoyable project that I kind of kept going. Using different materials and cutting different sizes, we have a small library going on. I actually enjoy the simple books most. They have a basic feel like someone made it in an old cottage to record some home recipes to share with family. Well, fellow enthusiast, we have come to the end of our project. My boy David finally has his pretend books with blank pages to make believe study whatever subject is needed for his photo shoot. The multitude of books fill out his desk and surroundings added to the illusion of our dolly world and could also double as a very neat mini journal or notebook. Thank you for joining me, making a few mistakes, but attempting a new craft for this hobby. I hope you enjoyed our time putting together these doll sized books and perhaps giving you some creative mojo to give it a shot for yourself. Have fun with your dolls, and I'll be looking forward to our next time together. Bye, and thanks for watching.